What's going on everyone? It's the EV engineer. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your system for kernel programming. And then I'm going to modify a Linux kernel driver. If you work directly with embedded systems, you will inevitably be exposed to kernel drivers either in your core product or in automated test or manufacturing systems. At the minimum, you need to understand how kernel drivers work. So what is a kernel module? Well, a kernel module allows for kernel space code to be dynamically added to the Linux kernel. The advantage of this is system modularity. Rather than having everything in your system be statically compiled, you can make changes, unload and reload kernel modules. It's kind of like a shared library in user space, except a kernel module is in kernel space. And a kernel driver is a type of kernel module. So without further ado, let's dive into the tutorial and I'll show you how to make changes to a kernel driver. So my development environment is a Ubuntu virtual machine. And if you've watched some of my previous videos, you might have noticed that I had other virtual machines around. But for this tutorial, I actually needed to make a new virtual machine because I kept running out of space. And the reason for that is if you're going to be making changes to the Linux kernel, you have to download the Linux kernel source. And this is going to take up a lot of space, especially once you start compiling it and it generates all the .as and the .o files, it'll quickly blow up your virtual machine. So if you don't have at least 80 gigabytes, it's probably not going to work. So uh, if you're trying to follow along the tutorial, I would suggest getting set up with a virtual machine that is at least 80 gigabytes. So I'm going to assume you're starting from a pretty fresh virtual machine and you haven't uh, and you don't have any of the prerequisites to do kernel programming. So the first thing you're going to need to do, as with uh, almost all tutorials, is do a sudo apt update. So after you do that, we're going to install a few packages uh, that you will need. So we'll press yes. And by the way, guys, you can find all these commands in the video description. So one thing you need to know is what kernel version you have. So to do that, type uname dash r. So for me, I'm running the Linux kernel 6.5.0 uh, dash 15 dash generic. So I'm going to need to install the Linux kernel source specifically uh, that matches my current kernel version. So we're going to run the command sudo apt install uh, Linux source and then the kernel version. So after we just ran this command, uh, check out what's in this directory again. So we now have the Linux source code and we also have this uh, .tar .bz2. So if you take a look at the Linux source, uh, you'll notice that there isn't really anything in here. So uh, what we need to do is we need to unpack this uh, tar file. Uh, the way we do that is we type in sudo tar uh, Linux source and then the name of the package. So once this command finishes, cd back into the Linux source directory and uh, you'll see that we actually have all the source code now. So we're almost ready to start making changes. But if you uh, notice here, the permissions on this folder um, are root and root. So we're going to want to change that to make our lives a little easier. So go back to the user source directory. And uh, what you're going to do is chown, which stands for change owner, um, to your user. So now you can see that the permissions of the folder are my username. So now let me introduce you to a command that's going to be quite useful for uh, making kernel modifications, and that is the dmesg command. So uh, the dmesg command is essentially uh, a log of all the kernel modules. So you can see here that uh, we have a lot of output from various uh, code modules. And you can see the whole boot process, logs, and other things. So PCI. And what we're going to look for is a module called PCNet. So PCNet is an AMD Ethernet controller driver. So we can find certain output here, like PCNet32, one cards found. So that's cool. Um, we're going to keep that in mind uh, for later. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to make changes to that driver. So um, the way we do that is we're going to open up a file called drivers net ethernet 
AMD PCNet32.C. Now, if you recall from the output we were just looking at, it said PCNet something about cards being found. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for cards found. So we're gonna do next, uh, next, and next, and take a look at this. We can see this uh, line of code which says PR info, a number, and then cards found. That looks pretty similar to what we were just looking at, doesn't it? So I'm gonna make a modification here. I'm going to add a bracket, and then I'm going to add a closing bracket, and I'm gonna add the following line of code. And that's gonna be print K, and I'm gonna type in kern info, and then uh, I'm gonna type in a custom string, and that string is gonna say, I can modify the Linux kernel, and we'll put an exclamation mark in there. So uh, I'm gonna save this now. So I'll do colon X. And as you might have guessed, what we need to do now is compile this code. So we're gonna compile just a specific kernel module, uh, the one we just changed, which is PCNet. So to prepare your system for compiling a kernel module, you actually need to run a command called uh, make modules prepare. Now, if you see this error, which clearly I am running into, uh, the reason is because I forgot to copy over the .config file for my Linux system. So the .config file is the Linux kernel configuration. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy our existing Linux kernel configuration from the boot directory, and we're just going to paste it into this directory. So if you uh, run this command, you can see that we just copied this file over. So one important thing to keep in mind is let's say you have just downloaded a uh, source directory like we just did. There may be a few differences in the Linux source code in here versus what the system is currently running. So to make everything compatible, you need to run a command called make old config. And that's actually recommended here if you take a look. It says, please run some configurator, make old config. And what make old config does is it takes your config file and it adds to it any new parameters uh, required for this version of the kernel source and sets them to their default values. So now we're gonna run the sudo make modules prepare command again. So this time it looks like it is happy. So what this command is doing is it is preparing our build environment for only compiling a single module. Um, so normally if you're making changes to the Linux kernel, you have to compile the whole thing. But since we only want to change one module, uh, compiling the whole kernel is a little overkill for what we're trying to do. So the make modules prepare command just builds enough dependencies uh, so that we can compile our driver. So now to actually compile the driver, we're gonna type make and then M for module drivers net ethernet AMD. So it's gonna compile all the uh, kernel drivers that fall into this directory. So of course, like any good tutorial, it did not work on the first try. There seems to be a build issue here because uh, it's complaining that there are some module symbols missing. So one reason for this could be that uh, there's a mismatch between the source code I have and the kernel headers being used for compilation. So after doing some reading online, I think I might be able to solve this by compiling using my current system's uh, header files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to CD into the directory where I made the changes, and then I'm going to run um, make-c lib modules you name uh, dash r build. So this is gonna use my current system header files and then the module is my current directory, and we're gonna make modules. So let's see if this works. So, so far, so good. So it looks like it actually worked, which is pretty cool. So uh, at this point, we have everything compiled, and what we should be able to do is now load this module into the kernel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the existing PCNet module, We'll run this command here, which is ls module grep pcnet. Oh, maybe that's why we need to do 32. So let's do pcnet uh, 32. 
then I will ls mod pcnet32. It's not running. So now we need to load uh, our compiled kernel module file. So the way you can find it is use uh, fuzzy search. It's a pretty awesome tool. So pcnet uh, 32.ko, it's right here. So it's, it's actually in our current directory. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to insert this module. We'll do sudo insert module pcnet dot ko so now let's check that the module is loaded and check check it out it is now loaded again so we were able to insert our module and we confirmed that it is loaded so now let's go back to dmesg and let's see moment of truth i'm going to search for i can and check it out i can modify the linux kernel is in the kernel log Wow, that was a journey. So I'm going to share quickly what I just learned about application binary interfaces. So the reason uh, it didn't work the first time when we were trying to um, build our module independently, and the reason for that, I think, is because something called the binary kernel interface. And as you can see, our ethernet is clearly working because we're able to Google, so that's pretty cool. So you can see here that on the canonical site, it says that if you cat the version of your kernel, uh, this is what you get. So in my case, I have 6.5.0-15, and this dash 15 is pretty important. What this is saying is that the binary interface has been uh, changed. Uh, so in this example, 12 times. In my case, it was bumped 15 times. So um, when I was trying to compile earlier, just by doing make in this directory, what it was doing is it was using the kernel header files for this version of the Linux kernel. However, since I was only trying to compile the PCNet driver, it was not able to find the symbols for all of its dependencies correctly. So in order to fix this, what I did with this command is I told it, hey, compile my uh, custom PCNet32 module using my system's uh, header files, which is what this part of the command is doing. And this is a really important point to understand because there is a small possibility here that we experience a runtime failure because I have Linux source 6.5.0 and I'm compiling it with the header files of a patched version of the kernel, which is 6.5.0-15. And although we were able to compile it and load it into the kernel, you want to make sure um, that whenever you do these kind of modifications that you're using uh, Linux source code and header files that closely match your operating system so that you don't experience any runtime issues, which it doesn't look like we did. So that wraps up today's video. I hope you learned something about the Linux kernel. And as you can see, it's very complicated and there's a, there's a lot to learn here and unpack. So if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.